gonna do the first ever, maybe zero to 20. I don't think I'm gonna get the 20 miles per hour. Here we go, full boost. I'm not pedaling. Nine miles per hour, 11, 12, 13. Get a little bumpy, 16, 18. N nope. We got the 18. I can get 70 miles to the gallon on this hog. Well, good day, everybody. No, it's not a car. I know that. We only review cars here on Beyond the Test Drive. But if it's cool and it moves and it's got really cool technology and it's made with passion and it's got great design, well, I'm here to bring you Go Cycles G4i. This is an electronic assist or electric assist e-bike. You know, these things are growing in, po in popularity around the world, especially in urban environments. And GoCycle, I think, is trying to take it to perfection. I am not the customer for this. I do not live in an urban environment. But I do really like the design of this, and this is really fun. I got to spend some time at one of uh, Electrify Expos, and I met Richard Thorpe, the founder, uh, who used to design cars, so he brought all his passion over to the Go Cycle. So check out that video there where I got to talk to him, and that's where I first learned about Go Cycle and this really cool G4. Let's just jump right in here. What is the G4i? Well, it's two bikes in one, and that's the beauty of this thing. It's basically a regular bicycle. On the back, you have a chain-driven rear wheel with three speeds. So think three-speed cruiser. That's what this thing is. Now, the beauty of it is, because it's a commuter bike, is they've enclosed all of the chain into a magnesium housing. So you don't have to worry about grease, dirt getting on the chain, grease getting on you. It's all enclosed. And it's just a really cool three-speed bike that you would pedal like anything else. But and then they've divided the other half into the e-bike. Up here you have a fully electric motor, and this electric motor will assist you when you want. And then when you want will depend on what you set. And there's a really cool app that we'll get into on the ride where you can change how much this electric motor assists your legs here. So there's a torque sensor in here. The harder your pedal, the more this electric motor will spin that front wheel. So very, very cool. You do have a shock here. You have all kinds of crazy materials. You have composites, you have aircraft grade aluminum, you have magnesium. And if you jump up to high-tech G4i+, Plus, well, then you're gonna get some more carbon composites. You're gonna get some more exotic materials. So that's what I really like about this is they've divided up the problem and they've conquered it. And controlling all of this is a very sophisticated computer system running sophisticated software. E4i, this is sort of the middle tier. This is the one I think is the one to get if you can because it comes with a three-speed automatic transmission. You really don't have to ever think about changing gears. The computer does it for you. But if you do want to change gears, you have a motorcycle-inspired grip right here. You can do that. The other thing that the G4i comes with is all the cables are enclosed. There's no electrical cables, there's no hydraulic cables. Everything is internal. Now we'll talk about the battery in a little bit, but it's all enclosed in here. And the G4i gives you a little bit more range. We're probably talking about 40 miles on average on how you would use this typically. If you go down to the G4, I think it's like 30-ish some miles. And then we'll get into the pricing at the end of the video. G4i also has this F1, Formula One, because Richard Thorpe used to work for McLaren, inspired digital gauge clusters. And the other cool thing about the G4i is it comes with this really nice LED front headlight that flashes, has a couple different, uh, different brightnesses on it. Again, good brakes here, brake, everything's really, really comfortable, which I'll show you out on the ride. And the final party trick for this, this was the key when they designed it, was that this is for the commuter. So it may need to go into your house. It may need to go into your back of your car. And that's that you fold this up. The kickstand is key because everything is sitting there right now. If I want to fold it, I have this nice high quality latch here. I'd undo that. I would swing. This around like this, again, is sitting on the kickstand, which is key. Now you say, what do I do with the handlebars? So they've come up with this cool compound angle. I don't know if it's a compound angle or not, but again, another high quality release there. 
and I'm gonna fold down my handlebars just like that. And here I can see I have this little elastic strap. They put a nice little, little grabber notch thing on there. And I put that like that. Let me turn off the headlight here. And there, everything is self-contained. Oh, I forgot to point out the bell. Right there. And then once I get it in this form like this, I can just wheel it around wherever I want. Now this is a good place to show you that battery, this little blue anodized, blue anodized ring. I can pull the battery out there. I'd have to remove this pin to open this up. I'm not gonna do that out here in the wild because I don't wanna lose that pin if I drop it in the grass. You can see some cabling there, but this is where your battery pack goes. You can charge it while it's in the go cycle or you can take the battery out and charge it separately that way you can have two batteries if you ride this a lot okay let's reverse this i'm going to go ahead and unhook the handlebars pop that up Le voila swing this around voila oh i should point out this is a four point mount and nice and wide and that's the key because when i clamp this i want this nice and stiff I want it to act like it's a single solid piece and that's what they do with that four point mount in this high quality clamp. There's your charge port right there. And there's a little strap here I'll show you on the ride where you can put your iPhone, it has a really cool app or your any other phone. And if you wanna charge your phone, a USB-C up in there if you wanna charge your phone off of this cycle. Okay, we have switched locations, a pretty hilly bike path here great place to try out the go cycle a couple things i should have pointed out earlier is when this is unfolded nice little place to store this little band there and again i mentioned the kickstand is key you just pull this back pop it up and you're ready to go now before i get the app out a couple things i want to point out about this display Just cruise around here. This is very maneuverable bike, very upright seating position, extremely comfortable, and also very, very solid. There's no rattling, there's just no squeaks or anything. Brakes are a little noisy, but I think they'll wear in a little better. This is a pretty new unit. So on the right side over here, I am showing you my current speed with four lights in miles per hour increments. Also, as I got up at, as I went up that little hill there, since it's the front wheel hill helping, you got to make sure you keep your weight over it. It will lose traction, but there is traction control. <laughs> so goes like it won't let that wheel just spin. It'll actually so pretty sophisticated software there. So speed on the right says so I'm in second gear with these two little lights, if you can see them and the charge level on the left. Now, when I am pedaling, the charge, see right now I got charge level, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70%. When I am pedaling, that charge level changes into a boost gauge. You can see it's not helping me much, not helping me at all. Now I'm not pedaling. As we go up this grade here, and you can see I'm getting a lot of boost. And I am trucking. You can see it went into third gear. So going up a pretty good little incline here and it's just cruising. Now, the good thing about this is I am working. So it's not like your bike does everything for you. Now it's getting even steeper. And a nice steep part right here. Again, I am working, so lean a little bit forward for traction. All right. All right, I got a little winded there, see? So it doesn't do all the work. Now, if you do want it to do all the work, this left grip, which will also change the headlight if you move it forward, this one blue dot says that I have it on a low setting, but in motorcycle throttle sort of way, I can twist this back and I get full boost from the motor. I'm not pedaling at all. And this electric 
boost assist will take you all the way up to 20 miles per hour if it can. So whenever you get a little tired, you want the bike to take over a little bit, you can just hit that boost. It'll either help you pedal or it'll take you, or it'll push you along under full power like I'm doing right now. But again, I think outside the United States, this front motor may be limited to 250 watts. The total speed, how much that assist can help you is also maybe limited based on local laws. I'm not an expert at that, so. So, yes, the beauty of this thing is you still get exercise. That's why I've really enjoyed this. Now, I have not rode this in the rain. We got full, we got full fenders. So it should keep the splatter off your back and off your face. I would imagine if you ride a lot in the rain, you're gonna want a little bit more aggressive tread. These do have some water clearing grooves on them, but they're not real aggressive. But they should be fine in most wet conditions. Okay, let's get the app going. Go Cycle app coming up. It should talk right away to the bike. Now the app does a couple things. Number one, there's like a data log. You really, you have to use the app to get this bike activated. And that's a good thing because it keeps track of the odometer. You can see this unit now has 42 miles on it. And what other stuff it tells you? So state of charge. This is just sounding like some basic things it tells you. And you can go in and get all kinds of information for the day, for the week, for all time. So that's good. Now, if you flip it sideways, I can put my phone here. And I thought this was a little gimmicky. I was like, eh, I'll never put my phone there. But it's actually been kind of fun because... And I was a little critical of this the first couple times I rode it. And that's the only way to change the mode is through the app. So the baseline or the, the default mode is called city mode. And that's sort of an equal amount, you know, that's sort of a good, good balance between boost and pedaling. And I have found it's perfect. You really don't want to change that mode. You can do an on-demand mode. And this is where I'm pedaling the bike. I have, it's basically a bicycle at this point. So I have full, I can change the gear, second, third. And it's intelligent. So it's just a bicycle. And it's called on demand because then I can just hit this and accelerate. So that's basically just a boost assist. It's not gonna help you pedal. It's not gonna put, uh, you know, it'll help you pedal, but it's you, it's you choose it. So that's actually the other mode that I kind of like. You know, if you just wanna ride this around like a bicycle, you can. Just forget about all the electronics. Do all the shifting yourself. But if you come up to a steep hill and you just want a little bit of help, you just hit that boost. And there you go. So that's the boost assist mode. Then I can customize my mode. I can go into the other menu system and change the graph of how much. And I'm back to city mode. I think there's a city plus eco mode. Eco mode is very little assistance. You know, that's where you want to eke out your whole battery, but it'll give you assistance when you need it. And you can always boost. But again, the ideal mode for this is just the city mode. All right, let's just go back to city mode. Okay, now I'm in city mode, okay. Okay, great place to try the brakes here. Right here, controlled stop. <clears throat> Whew. So, that balance those yourselves. Get most of that on the back there. Okay. So this thing is just a lot of fun. Now, the other thing that's interesting is, you know, I ride my bike on this trail. You know, when you're on an e-bike or any kind of assistance, you need to dress a little warmer because your average speed is going to be a lot higher. So I found out I had to put a little extra clothing when out riding on this because you're just cruising. 15 miles an hour on flat ground with little effort is very doable. I found that. But on the left side of this app, on your, you'll see your boost gauge. 
you'll see that red thing hop up. So no boost now. So like I said, the only reason you would need the app out because you get all this other information, you know, the basics, is when you want to change modes. And again, I have found very little reason to change modes again because you always have your boost function over here on the left. Again, very comfortable, very stable. You feel like you're riding something that's extremely high quality. And that's what we're gonna wrap this up with today is who's, who's this for? Obviously the urban commuter. I mean, if I were going to, if I had a chance or the opportunity to ride my bike to work, I would get one of these. Now I'm sure there's other excellent e-bikes out there but this one just does such a good job. You just feel like you're riding something that has, there's been a lot of thought put into the design of this. So this is the G4i. This typically is about 5,500 US dollars. I've seen it on sale right now here in November, a Black Friday sale where it's down at 4,000. At $4,000, when I think about the componentry, the software, the design, the foldability, the performance, I I think that is, I can't imagine selling it for less. That, you know, that's just my opinion, technical opinion on everything that went into this, that $4,000, you know, at 5,500, eh, you know, that's, that's a tough one. Now you can get the baseline G4, I think that's $500 off right now. You're, you're, <laughs> you're losing this automatic transmission. You, it's a mechanical only. I'm perfectly willing to give that up. You're willing, you get rid of this uh, F1 gauge. You still get some, uh, uh, you do get some, you know, primary readouts of battery charge. You don't get a headlight, but you're gonna put your own light on it anyway. It's gonna fold the same. It's gonna weigh the same, about 35 pounds. You're gonna lose about 10 miles of range. Man, I would jump on that if you really need one. I, you know, I think it, you're getting the same performance. Uh, you're just not getting um, you know, you're not getting the bigger battery, but 30 miles of range is just fine. You know, I think that's a good bargain also, given how cool and fun this bike is. The other use case that's interesting is if you, if you travel, you like to travel, but you want to extend your range when you get there, you can take one of these with you. I took this up to Gettysburg National Park, uh, the battlefield up in Southern Pennsylvania. It was a great way to get around and get more things seen. You're not driving around in your car to see to see things you just hop on this and it's just a blast it's a range i call it a range extender for travelers it's a little extravagant of course uh you know it's a little bit of a luxury item at that point but that's the other use case and that's where i would love to have one of these myself anyway a little bit different today guys appreciate you watching thanks to all the subscribers if you hung in there let me know if you have any questions or comments below about Go Cycle. If you own e-bikes, we'd love to hear you because I'm not an expert. I just think this is fun and I've enjoyed my time with it this week. So thanks for coming along today and have a great day, morning or evening, wherever you may be.